Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome to yet another Steinhardt review. This is the third Steinhardt review in the last three months, having previously only looked at two over the last five years. What's going on? Why the sudden interest in Steinhardt? It's nothing sinister, I promise you. I've just been offered three of them on loan by three different people over the last three months, and I've said yes to all three. The previous two both looked a lot like Rolex models because let's face it, that's what Steinhardt have always done. But the subject of today's video is a bit of a unicorn. It's a Steinhardt that doesn't look 100% like a Rolex. I know, right? This is the one model in their range that I've always been most interested in, precisely because of the fact that it's an original design Steinhardt. It's their Ocean One Titanium 500 Premium Ceramic Dive Watch, and that, by the way, is its official title on their website. The name pretty much tells the story, Titanium Premium Ceramic 500 meters, a hell of a set of specs, but for Steinhardt's typically low prices. With the Euro now having reached parity with the US dollar, these are 660 USD including taxes and 550 USD without taxes. You can see why I'm interested in this one, can't you? As I said, it is on loan, big shout out, and a thank you to a US subscriber, Stephen, for getting this one shipped direct from Steinhardt straight to me here in Sydney. It's brand new, he hasn't even seen it yet himself, so we get to enjoy the sticker peeling and the smell of fresh packing peanuts together today. Well, you can't smell it, but you know what I mean. Let's flip the camera and get on with it. All right, so unboxing and initial impression style video review of this Steinhardt today then, but we start with an unbagging. Thank you, FedEx. They dropped this one off last week to me in Summerhill, sunny Summerhill, though that's not what it looks like out of my window today. Ocean One Titanium 500 Premium Seurat, so it's the right watch. And because Stephen is X Euro, he paid the X Euro price, 560 euros. I reckon that is a great price on this one. I think perhaps you will agree with me by the time we get to the end of the video. Okay, there we are. Looking kind of familiar, as I said, this is the third Steiny that I've reviewed in as many months, but this is one I've had my eye on for several years. They've done a good job with this bubble wrap, hang on. Okay, let's pop the top, there it is. And let's have our first look. There we go, operating instruction manual, let's ignore that. Let's have our first look at the watch. And there it is, a proper tool diver, this one. Painted dial, flat dial, big slabby white fence post hands, fantastic legibility, and still got fair amount of chunk to it, this one. It is a large watch, I believe this is a 4243, and yet it does have that customary Steinhardt long lug width and rather flat case profile as well. So I hope Stephen has got the wrist for this one long term. I hope I've got the wrist for it in the short term. Let's peel off the stickers. All right, and the money shot to finish us off, the dial protector here. There we go. Yeah, you can obviously see that ceramic bezel insert. That's the kind of first thing you notice. It's a high gloss bezel insert. And look at the blue. Blue accents on the dial. We've got blue Arabics around on the minute track. There's a blue second hand, blue model branding, the titanium 500 as well there. But if I move this one around, you can see in the glass, there's a little blue hue. There you go. It just catches it occasionally. That is very, very nice. Something I picked up on in my most recent Casio Oceanus review as well. Not sure whether it's the anti-reflective or they use a colored gasket, but yeah, a really, really nice touch with this one. Okay, so we know it's running. Let's get it sized and come back and have a look at the dimensions and specifications. All right, I'm back. And I managed to film a little bit of macro outside today in not particularly summery summer hill. You can see the rain in the background. Although frankly, with a claimed 500 meters of water resistance, I was far more concerned about my camera equipment getting wet than I was about Steven Steinhardt getting wet. I'll throw in a little bit more of that macro later on. I also filmed a loom video. The loom, by the way, is very impressive. So do stick around for that. So dimensions, 42.8 mil in diameter. That's what I measure it at. Similarly, 14.8 mil thick, nearly 15 mil. It is a thick beast today, but then again with 500 meters of water resistance, it's gonna have a huge piece of sapphire crystal on the front and a thick case back, etc. So that is forgivable. 
Lug tip to lug tip is 50.8. Perhaps my calipers are 0.2 mil short. 22 millimeter lug width, tapering down to just under 18, back up to 20 at the clasp. But despite those big dimensions sized up for me, because it's titanium, this one weighs in at 134 grams. You'd be looking at at least 50, if not 60 grams more, if this watch was made of stainless steel. But Stanley don't do a stainless steel one, only titanium. So grade two titanium, case, crown. I believe though, the bezel is made of stainless steel. I'll show you the bezel action in just a second. It suggests that it's made of stainless steel. It's got a really good bezel action. Full titanium bracelet with solid links, solid end links, and sizable screws here. Talking of links, I suspect the big guys are gonna be interested in this one today, so this is important. Two full links and two half links. Very nice of Steiny to give you two halves. That means there's no excuse for not getting a good fit, especially when the clasp has four holes of micro adjust. Kind of standard Steinhardt clasp here with the fold over. Oh, it's a little bit stiff, as you can see. This one is made of all titanium. Now that keeps it light, but it does mean that long long-term durability is a little bit questionable, certainly more questionable than if they had made it out of stainless steel. So do bear that in mind if you are thinking about picking up one of these for yourself. I must say though, I do love the color. Titanium always has that kind of dark, dull gray. This one is extra dark and extra dull, and I think it really suits the watch overall. Really goes nicely with the, the white, black, and blue look from the dial and the handset. So nice crown guards here, screw down crown again made of titanium with the Steinhardt S and crown on top of that. So a crown on a crown, if you will. And female end links, you note. It does have a long lug to lug of nearly 51 and it is very flat, but at least they've helped us out with those female end links. And it's a lovely piece of glass. As I said, it is bound to be thick because of that increased water resistance, but lovely clarity, clearly plenty of anti-reflective undercoating there and no distortion. So it's a proper piece of concentric double dome. Onto the bezel, fully loom ceramic insert. I'll show you the loom later on as mentioned. 120 click, unidirectional. Sounds pretty good. There is a touch of back play on it, but everything lines up as it should. Doesn't sound like it's made of titanium. Don't quote me on that. I have watched and read other reviews of this one in the past where they say that this is a stainless steel bezel. It certainly doesn't feel like titanium. Stainless is always a little bit more robust in the hand and tie, which can be a little bit tinny by comparison. So why have I been keen to get my hands on one of these then? What is it about this watch that has always appealed to me? I think it looks great. I love this stark, white on black look, it is just incredibly legible. Clearly, Rolex influence still remains even in this non-copycat Steinhardt. Triangle at 12, batons at the three and the nine, and printed circular indices in white everywhere else. Love the handset. They're almost exactly the same thickness, but obviously not the same length. Incredibly easy to read, and I love the fact that they have got those black centers, so they look like they're floating on that matte black dial. Good choice making that arrowhead second hand in that pale baby blue color. It might have looked just a little bit too stark if they had made that one, either black or white. And again, I think that blue looks good on the angle chaptering, marking the five minutes, the titanium 500 model branding and Swiss made underneath that nicely integrated beveled date complication at the six o'clock with in inverted commas, color matched white date wheel. The Steinhardt branding is unobtrusive printed above the pinion, but the matte black dial does sit in stark contrast to the high polished gloss ceramic bezel insert. I'm sure you can see the way the light is hitting this one on the left hand side, you get a lot of reflection back from the area around 40 and 50. Another reason why I've always fancied this one is the movement. For your 560 euro slash US dollars, you don't get an ETA 2824 or equivalent, you get an ETA 2892 or equivalent, that equivalent being the Salita SW300, and I believe that Stephen has got the SW300 in this one because the rotor shoulders are flat rather than angled as they normally are on the ETA. I do not think it matters a jot either way. 25 dual hacking and hand winding Swiss made auto, and this this is an elaborate grade version as well, as you can clearly see because of the perlage on the bridge and elsewhere. So basically you're getting a 300 for the price of a 200. Now as discussed, it does wear quite big and quite flat because of that long lug to lug dimension and the flat case, but those female end links definitely help. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference and I could get away with this one, no problem at all. But do bear in mind, if you have wrists slightly smaller than mine, then maybe you'd be better looking for a 39 model from Steinhardt. And unfortunately they don't and have never made this titanium model in a 39. More is the pity. Looks great though, love the color scheme and love 
love that dull, almost gunmetal look from the tie. And legibility really is a standout on this watch, isn't it? I've always been a fan of the white on black, the kind of zin look you see elsewhere with Helms, Obris Morgan, and a few other smaller companies. Yeah, I really, really enjoy it. And watches are supposed to be legible after all, aren't they? And I said I managed to squeeze in a quick loom video as well. BGW9, heaps of it on those flat hands, printed onto the dial and in that ceramic bezel insert. When I speed this one up, printed dials do tend to fade quicker than applied indices, which are then filled with loom. And that is the case when we get towards the end of my test. You can see the dial printing fading first. No problems from the bezel though, and no problems from the hand though. Overall, very strong. Okay, a mini moans and niggles section to finish us off today. I know I've only just taken this one out of the box, but hey, this is my job to find the good and the bad quickly from a watch that I have in my hand. Look, big, flat, thick. Do you really need a 15 mil thick watch with 51 mil lug to lug? Is that something that you want to wear every day? At least it isn't heavy because of that titanium. The one weak spot that I can identify quite quickly though is the clasp. It's a little bit too thin perhaps for this style of watch and the fact that it is all titanium, it just doesn't feel all that confidence inspiring. I would have loved to have seen something perhaps bulkier. Not often you hear me say that asking for a bulkier clasp. Maybe that would have helped balance out the large head of the watch, maybe even with stainless steel internals to provide an extra bit of durability and longevity. And if we return to a little piece of macro again, that shiny ceramic bezel insert personally, I would have preferred them to have moved to a matte ceramic insert over the years. I think that would have really taken this one down a notch rather than up a notch, if you see what I mean. It would have gone nicely with the matte dial and that dull gray text that you get from most of this watch. So definitely not a new model from Steinhardt then. This one has been doing the rounds for years. I'm a bit late getting my hands on it finally, but it hasn't disappointed. Stunning value from Steinhardt. Everything is more expensive these days, but Steinhardt haven't jacked up their prices yet. Grab one now before they do, and let's hope they don't watch this video. So there you have it. Initial impressions on the Titanium 500. Don't disappoint. Fabulously legible, very well spent, and no one can accuse you of trying to look like you're wearing a Rolex, which let's be honest, is rare with a Steinhardt. Thanks again, Stephen. I'll get this one back in the post to you today, mate. If you're a fan of the brand, why not check out my favorite Steinhardt, the 39 mm Ocean Vintage GMT, either with Fotina or without. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again in a future video.